How's it going everyone? Thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to go over some beginner tips and tricks. I've actually watched a couple YouTube videos already from other YouTubers giving their tips and tricks. And a couple videos were giving tips for like level 20 and above content. And I'm thinking people haven't even gotten their hands on the game yet. Like pump the brakes, let's take a chill pill. People need beginner level tips. It's literally day one of getting to play the game. So I wanted to make a video going over some beginner tips and tricks that you guys can take advantage of very early on in your playthrough. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first tip that I have for you guys is, it sounds really basic and simple, but it's to play the main story at least for a little while. It's going to be tempting to go out and explore, I know, because that's what I did. I thought to myself that, you know, I don't want to rush the story. I want it to last as long as possible, so I want to go out and explore the universe. Well... The game's kind of designed that the main story acts as like a tutorial and they're going to teach you things that you're not going to be able to learn on your own through the main story. So I would stick with literally just playing the main story missions for at least a good five to six story missions, at least until you meet some of the crew and you get situated with Constellation. Because like I said, if you go out exploring, you're going to get extremely overwhelmed because you're not going to have access to certain abilities and you're not going to know how to do things until they show you how to do them in the story. Uh, so stick with the main story for a little bit before you go exploring. Just trust me on this one. Uh, so the next tip has to do with uh, combat. If you like to do first person combat like I do, uh, you can actually wall peek and corner peek uh, with the zoom button. So if you're crouched behind some boxes or some crates or maybe you're trying to hide behind the wall, if you hold in the zoom button it will peek your character out of cover and then you can just unload on your enemies and then as soon as you release the zoom button it will safely put you back behind cover. This is extremely handy when you're indoors or you're inside doing any type of combat. Now unfortunately you can't do it in third person. This is only a first person thing. That's why I personally like to play uh, all the combat in first person. And then when I'm doing all my exploring and stuff, that's when I like to switch to third person. Uh, so next up, I want to talk about your scanner, because your scanner is actually your best friend. It, it shows you a lot of stuff. It can help you when you're lost. Uh, so for example, when you're scanning, uh, the scanner will show you arrows towards your current objective. So it is very easy to get lost in Starfield because they don't have a local map. There's no way to see a map of your local location. So if you're in a big city and you get lost, or if you're in some sort of outpost and, and you have no idea where to go, whatever mission you have selected in your menu will show up when you bring up the scanner. So just pull out your scanner and then arrows will point you in the direction of wherever you need to go. So this definitely comes in handy if you don't have a very good sense of direction in video games. So another cool thing about your scanner is that it will highlight any objects that you can interact with or pick up. So this is really handy when you're looting, especially in dark areas like caves or if the lights are blown out or if it's just dark for whatever reason. Uh, you can always just pull out your scanner and see if there's any objects that maybe you missed. This has come in handy so many times for me when I was looting. I couldn't tell you how many times I missed credits just laying on top of a counter, but my scanner was able to pick it up, so I was able to run back and go pick up those credits. So I've made a crap ton of extra money because my scanner was able to see things that I just normally didn't see with my own eyes. So be sure to take advantage of the scanner when you are doing your looting. Another tip about your scanner is that when you're in scanning mode, it will by default switch you to your mining laser. So all the way up to I was about level 20, I had a mining laser just favorited into my favorites menu. That way I could just go down and easily access the laser whenever I needed it. But don't be like me, don't keep a mining laser saved in your favorites menu because every time you pull out the scanner, it will just auto equip your mining laser and then you can just pull it out using the attack button. So next up, when it comes to scanning, when you're exploring different planets and stuff, when you look off in the distance, you will see a lot of landmarks that will pop up and you have no idea what they are. Well, you can actually scan these and it will tell you if they are a structure or if they are man-made or if they're an outpost. Your scanner will actually give you a little bit more details about some of these things that are off in the distance that are normally kept a mystery. 
So the next tip is probably one of the most important tips that I can give you, and it's that you should go to sleep before doing literally anything. Because when you go to sleep, it gives you a 10% XP bonus. And that 10% XP is definitely going to add up over time, trust me. So what I like to do is when I'm off exploring or if I fast travel anywhere, obviously you have to get off of your ship. So when you land your ship or you dock your ship, the first thing it's going to ask you is to either stand up you can dock or you can just exit your vehicle. What I recommend is that you stand up, don't get off of your ship right away, and then go sleep in a bed that's on your ship. I know the starting ship that it gives you has a bed, so you can easily take advantage of that, but I'm pretty sure most of the ships will have some sort of bed in them. Uh, so anytime I go literally anywhere, I make sure I stand up first, go take a quick one hour nap, get that 10% XP boost, and then I go out and I do whatever mission. And there are ways that you can get even more XP that does stack. For example, if you drink or eat certain food items, they can give you a temporary XP boost as well, and that stacks. So for example, if you have some tea in your inventory, you can drink some tea, and that will stack with your sleep, and that will give you a 12% XP bonus. I like to keep some sort of food item that gives me an XP bonus saved in my favorites tab. That way I can always just quickly access it. And then I make sure I'm always getting that XP bonus at all times. All right, so moving on to the next tip, this has to do with stealing and pickpocketing and stuff. Now pickpocketing is actually one of the better ways to make money in this game, especially if you put some perks into it and you get really good at it. But pickpocketing actually doesn't make people angry just by looking in their inventory. Like you can sneak up on people People and look in their pockets and they don't care as long as you don't take anything out I mean you can look but you can't touch and pickpocketing doesn't make other people angry so if other people are in view of you pickpocketing as long as your pickpocket was a success no one's going to care like it doesn't matter if you do it in front of like 20 people no one's going to care if you steal stuff and then since we're on the topic of stealing things let's say you want to steal an item in a store well I went ahead and tried the bucket on the head trick that people People used to do in Skyrim and I can confirm that that does not work it will still make people angry if you steal from them so don't waste your time doing the bucket on the head trick uh, and same thing goes for uh, picking up an item and trying to move it somewhere different and then stealing it I used to do that all the time in Skyrim like if there was an item in a store that I wanted I would just pick it up carry it out of view of whatever store owner and then I would just pick it up and steal it well if you pick up items that don't belong to you in this game it counts that as stealing and it will make people angry. So don't try to pick up and carry objects away out of sight because it just won't work. Uh, so next up is a tip that got me out of a number of different situations, but let's say you accidentally start a fight. Things can very quickly get out of hand and suddenly you have an insane bounty and it was a complete accident. Well, all you have to do is put away your weapon. This also works in Skyrim and Fallout. This is returning in Starfield. But if you just stow away your weapon, it's going to make the NPCs sort of forgive you. Like, you didn't mean to shoot them. It was an accident. You put away your weapon. You're good. Now, this doesn't work all of the time. Uh, sometimes, like, if you make the wrong people angry, like raiders or the, I don't know, the police or security, sometimes they just don't care and they're going to kill you anyway. But it is a good way to de-escalate NPCs or if you accidentally make a store owner mad, like, you just put away your weapon and it de-escalates the situation. But you can only do this once. Like, don't make people angry, put away your weapon, and then shoot them a second time time because if you do it a second time there's no getting out of it like it's a full-blown fight uh, but I figured I'd let you guys know that if you do ever find yourself in this situation you know just just put away your guns so the next tip, I wanted to make a quick one because I'm going to be doing an entire video based on skills, uh, but I wanted to say right away that the jetpack skill is probably one of the first skills you need to get. You cannot even use jump packs until you have the jump pack skill, so that's probably first and foremost, make sure you get the jump pack skill. So if you don't have it right away from one of your starting backgrounds, I would definitely invest in that probably first and foremost. So now I have two more tips before I end the video. Uh, I just want to say that anytime you go to a store and you have some extra money, make sure you purchase digipicks. The digipicks are the lock picks in this game. 
But the difference between Starfield and let's say Skyrim is that even if you are successful with lockpicking, no matter what, it is going to consume one of your digi picks. So every time you try to lockpick a door or a chest or whatever, it will consume a digi pick. So you will burn through digi picks. And if you screw up, that's going to cost you a digi pick. If you made a mistake and you try to go back a level in the digi pick, that's also going to cost you a digi pick. So you absolutely go through digi picks. In Skyrim, I had just a massive amount of lock picks and I would just sell them off because I had so many of them I didn't know what to do with. I can't get enough digi picks. It doesn't matter if I have like 50 of them hoarded, I will still burn through them very quickly. The digi picks are definitely hard to come by and you don't want to catch yourself at like a, a, a door or some sort of big chest and you know there's a special item there, but you just can't reach it because you're out of digi picks. And then while you're at the store, I would go to the aid tab and purchase any of the like med kits. You know, definitely early on in the gameplay, before you can put some skill points into some of the health skills, you're going to be going through a lot of med kits and stuff. So make sure you buy those whenever you can as well. And then the final tip that I have for you guys is don't sleep on the activity tab. In Skyrim and Fallout, the miscellaneous tab was just those side missions that you didn't really have to pay much attention to. It was normally just like, hey, go get me this item and I'll give you some credits or I'll give you some caps or whatever. Well, in Starfield, the activity tab is actually important because these can turn into some pretty big side missions. I had what I thought was just a random side activity fetch quest turn into like this hour-long quest that had me going to multiple planets and it just completely turned into something I was not expecting. The only missions that aren't really as important are in the mission tab and those are the type of missions that you can sign up for yourself at like bounty boards. These are like the bounty hunter missions and stuff like that and you can cancel those missions at any point. So in previous games it was the miscellaneous tab and this game it's the missions tab. So everything else, the main story missions, the uh, the blue look looking icon missions and the activity missions are all pretty important. So yeah, just don't skip out on the activity tab or you're going to be missing some pretty important side content. Uh, so that is going to do it for everything in this tips and tricks video. Believe it or not, I had to cut out like 50 tips that I already had written down. So I had to condense this video. I have a lot more tips and tricks videos planned. So if you guys are new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It's greatly appreciated, and that is going to do it for me, guys, and I will talk to you all in my next Starfield video.